finally, a, a good, good news story from Javier Millet. Javier Millet provides us with lots of good news stories. And uh, this one comes uh, as a consequence of the fact that his budgetary reforms, the things that he could do without the legislature, the thing that he has done basically as uh, a president of Argentina, have basically led already super fast to a nearly $600 million monthly surplus, surplus in Argentinian government, something the United States has not seen since, I think, 1999, since the very last uh, period of the Clinton uh, administration. Uh, the United States has not seen a surplus. Well, Argentina just achieved a surplus, a budgetary surplus. Not just any budgetary surplus, but a significant one, a $600 million which is quite impressive, very impressive. It's the first surplus that Argentina has achieved since August of 2012. Uh, at the same time, the monthly inflation rate, still very high, has fallen uh, from 25.5% to last month, to, uh, or a month and a half ago, to 20.6% uh, in, uh, in January. Uh, this is a huge. Uh, Argentina is now committed to running uh, surpluses or uh, uh, for sure not running deficits. Wouldn't it be amazing if uh, we could get the same thing, uh, if we could say, if we get the same thing uh, in, um, in uh, the United States actually running a, uh, a surplus? Um, the package, the reform package that he passed is still in parliament. They're still quibbling, you know, quibbling, arguing about the uh, the little details involved in it, and um, it it will be interesting to see. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, how that uh, how how successfully is there. That needs to happen for the long term security of the reforms. It needs to happen for the long term viability of the Argentinian economy and for its, uh, for, for its liberation. Uh, everything he can do from an executive order perspective, I, I think he will do. But it's, all, it's limited as, as, as long as he's going to respect the laws in Argentina. That is limited, just like it's limited in the United States, to actually bring about change. He is going to have to work with parliament. He is going to have to get parliament to actually embrace his agenda. And that, who knows how long that'll take. Hopefully, by the time I'm there in April, um, who, uh, but, uh, you know, we will see how, uh, how well that goes. Um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see Javier Millet uh, address CPAC. Uh, he is so removed. He is so far away from the policies of American conservatives and uh, people like, uh, like uh, Orban, who is going to be there at CPAC, uh, he is so removed from them in terms of his policies. He is so committed to actual liberty, at least in, in markets, to, to actual free markets, whereas they are committed to government management of Markets, government management of industry, uh, as is Trump, as is the entire uh, new American conservative movement. It is going to be very interesting to see how he uh, addresses them and whether he's willing to push them, to push their buttons, to push them in maybe a direction that might make some of them a little uncomfortable. I mean, that would be great if he does it, or he might just play the game of just wanting to get their adulations and get their standing ovation, we will see. I mean, uh, you know, if you think about his position in Ukraine, if you think about his position in Israel, but particularly Ukraine, it is dramatically different than the position of Orban, the position of Trump, the position of many, many, many of the people who will be uh, at CPAC. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how he presents himself and uh, how he is received, how he is received.